You are watching the Manjaro Beginners Tour, and this episode is a bonus. Certainly not for the weak of heart, but you guys asked for it, you guys got it. We are doing a net install right now on Spatry's Cup of Linen. Okay, I have the live image in my computer, and we are ready to do a net install. I hope you guys are excited. I am excited about this, too. Doing a net install is unique, because unlike many distributions that you've downloaded and tried out, and how many times have we downloaded a distro that just had a bunch of software selections that we just really didn't need or there were just too many selections or whatever for what so for whatever reason building your own distribution is a learning experience in of itself now if any of you have built arch linux gentoo or even slackware this net install will be a walk in the park but you if you've never done a net install before this is going to be a little bit of a learning experience for you. Okay? All right, first, let's go ahead and log in. The username and password is Manjaro. Okay, and then uh, the next thing we're going to do is exactly what it instructs. We're going to sudo setup. Okay, and now we are in the command line installation program. Of course, in the very first episode in this series, you guys saw me use this. And guess what I also did? I also made a backup of the original virtual machine. So guess what? When I set my drive partitions, I still have them. UTC time is what we need. We are in America. Press the N key and then mouse down once for New York. I'm happy with the time and date. And then we're going to go into disk preparation. I said I have my partitions already set up, so we're going to set the file systems and mount points. It is scanning my disks right now. It's showing me what it has. Okay, and then it wants to know which partition I want to use a swap. Well, with uh, more than 8 gigs, you don't really have to use one, but probably be a good idea to have swap because, yeah, your your system may be unstable if all your memory gets used up. So, dev sda 2 is my swap partition. Yes, uh, we're cool with that. Label it swap. That's fine. Leave that one empty. Root partition is dev sda 3 uh, Of course, root needs to be x4. Yes, enter, enter, very good. All right, now we have another partition we need to set up. That is dev SDA1. That's only 100 megs, and it's boot. So uh, we're going to just leave that at exe2. We're going to overwrite that data as well. Okay, I'm happy with it. And we'll leave that one empty. Very good. All right, and then dev SDA4. This one is going to be called home. Okay, I want that one to be x4 as well. We're going to overwrite it. Home. Okay, very good. And then we're done. That's it. It's giving me a confirmation of everything we just did. Very simple, very easy. Yada, yada, yada. And of course, I like using UUIDs. Uh, and these will be written to the FSTAB, if I'm not mistaken. I know, no, or it's going to be in Grub or one of those things. Yeah, I think that's how it goes. Sorry, too much caffeine today. <laughs> okay, and we're going to let these partitions go ahead and get made. And the moral of this story, folks, is never get wired on too much coffee. Jeez, I can't even talk right today, huh? <laughs> okay, all the partitions have been successfully mounted, so we're good with that. All right, and then we're going to return to the main menu because now it is untimed. Uh, now it's time for uh, the root images and the net images. They're uh, squash FS, and uh, they're going to unsquish them and 
put all those files into those uh, partitions we just mounted. So uh, while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Now that the installation has succeeded, when we press uh, Enter to continue, it's going to start configuring some things. Now it's time for system configuration. Let's put in a root password. Let's set up a user account. I need to have pseudo rights. Okay. Uh, I don't need to change locale. And I don't need to change the V console, but I may want to edit some other configuration options, such as maybe change the host name. Uh, better do that in, uh, make that V-T-A-R-D-I-S. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then uh, control X, Y, and then enter. Okay, and I think that'll be fine. We'll just uh, scroll down here and then back. Now it's going to generate the locales. Once that's completed, it's time to install a bootloader. Uh, we're using BIOS, Grub BIOS, and it's going on SDA. All right, now that Grub's been successfully installed, we're finished. Okay, and let's uh, shut down, and uh, that way I can remove the uh, media from the virtual drive. Okay, we've rebooted, and let's go ahead and get into our new system now. Okay, now that we're logged into the system, now we need to do a few things. We need to update. Before we can update, we're going to need to update the keys. So, Okay, you'll only see this message once. And we'll proceed with that installation. It says some things need to be updated. Okay, and now it's going to grab the Manjaro key ring, the Arch Linux key ring, and it's updating those keys. Okay, the next thing we need to do is update the system. So that is uh, sudo tac capital S Y Y U Pac Man. Duh! <laughs> Too much caffeine today, kids. Full system upgrade. And I'm going to pause the video while I'm waiting on this to complete. Something I should have probably mentioned that if your download speeds are a little bit slow, uh, you can update your mirrors to, you know, get a better connection. And uh, that would be by running sudo pacman tac mirrors tac g. Uh, I'm also going to define the country with the C switch and then United States. Okay, and then it's updated my mirror list, and uh, it'll pull down uh, off the fastest repository uh, from that scan there. The kernel was updated, so we're going to need a reboot, but I'm not going to reboot the system just yet, because there's a few things I'm going to need. Um, I may want to build things, so I know I'm going to need a uh, base devel. Probably going to need Yaort to build things from the AUR. Um, 
I'm going to need a display manager so that I can log in to an X session. So uh, why don't we use LXDM? Uh, the X session that I want is XFCE4. And then how about XFCE4 TAC goodies? Uh, I think that's a nice spread of applications to start off with. Okay, uh, give me all, give me all, give me all. All right, 109 megs of data is going to download. So we'll let that complete. Once the updates have completed, then we need to enable LXDM. So let's do that. Sudo system control. Enable. LXDM dot service tack F to force it. All right, and then it's created the necessary sim links. Now at this point we can just reboot. Okay, we are now booting into our system, and looky what's about to happen. We've got a nice display manager here. Uh, if you have a default session selected here, you need to make sure that it says XFCE session, since that is the desktop that we installed. Click your username, put in your password. And a prompt will come up asking you if you want a default configuration, and that's what I chose. And so basically, that's what we have here is a simple default configuration. And uh, where we go from here? Well, I don't know. Open up a terminal emulator and search for more applications to install. Maybe uh, you might want to install Compiz. The sky is the limit at this point. Once you've got yourself a GUI that you can uh, boot into, uh, you can pretty much do anything you want to. If you want to have uh, PAMAC installed and have the GUI for installing applications, you can get that. Personally, I'd be happy just using the terminal. So, uh, at any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed this net install tutorial. Not sure what I'm going to be covering on my show next. Uh, I'll probably at some point be doing a reveal of the latest uh, M coal uh, once I'm finished building that. Um, but other than that, uh, and then I've got the news and nonsense report coming up on uh, Sunday, so um, pretty much uh, I've got enough activities to keep me busy around here. So uh, until next time, peace out. Mm -hmm.